back. They win the flip. They defer. So now Mariskel will kick it off. A strategy practiced earlier this week over and over was to pooch punch short of Newman. But Gary, I think you agree with me that with a wind in the back, Mariskel might try to drive this one out of the end zone. The altitude, too, should be able to get it out of there. He slipped. It's on the ground. Newman handles it on the mistake. Picks his way to the 15. Cuts to the hole. To the 30. 35. Got the corner. And he's out beyond midfield. Great field position as Mariscal slips on the opening kickoff. And Newman brings it back 52 yards. Strategy, strategy, strategy. And all of a sudden, a slip of the foot. Watch it, just as he approaches the ball, his left foot, his plant foot, just goes, and there it is, and that gives him the opportunity, a divot, a slip, and Newman gets his hands on his ball, and boy does it go. L. Roberson under center. Great field position for Roberson's first series. He'll call the play right at the line of scrimmage. He'll have two wide receivers off to the right. Darren spoils, splits now. They go back in the shotgun, and there's the penalty. They ran the clock out. Roberson makes a middle blunder to start Great this game. game. That's Five first and 15. That's inexcusable starting a football game when you come off the sideline like that. Roberson has got to pay attention to the clock. Remember, this is Kansas State's first road game of the year, and they had 12 penalties in their win against USC. Hand signals of the play. Travis Wilson gives him a fullback now because first and 15 is a lot different than first and 10. Backed up to the 48-yard line. Roberson brings him to the line, and they'll set the eye now. Motion to the right gives him a slot man on the move. They want to see how the defense reacts. They'll run Sproles right behind the fullback, short of the 40-yard line. So let's take a closer look at L. Roberson and keep this in mind. He will be operating with a short leash today. They will turn to number five, Mark Dunn, in a heartbeat if he can't get it done. Roberson, known as a better runner than a passer, but he has not thrown an interception this season. Coach Snyder will put it up early, maybe right now on second down and nine. the tight end. Motion him to the left in an H-back formation. They let him lead the way and Sproles will not get the job done as Corey Massoni cleans it up. Number 12 that time. Our Alamo starting lineup. Sproles will carry the load. We have seen that already. Wilson will be in and out in the lineup depending on whether or not they use two tight ends. They'll use an eight-man front defensively for the Buffaloes with Sneed and Massoni, the two safeties, moving up. That will leave those corners, Strickland and Jackson, isolated man-to-man. -man. They must hold up to make this defense work. Now it is third down and ten. Roberson eyes that unusual defensive set. And again, he changes up. The clock comes down to five seconds on him. He's got to hurry again on third and ten. Gets protection and he'll take off, but he'll be short of the first down. Colorado spies on him, and he couldn't get it done as Sam Wilder, number 90, the sophomore from Dallas, cleans up on him. Good changeup for Vince Oakley that time. Colorado defensive coordinator went with the nickel package against uh, L. Roberson, confused him a bit, and then Sam Wilder cleans up on him, basically almost a sack. In effect, K-State wastes that great return by Newman. And it was that mistake that put him at first and 15. Running into the breeze, fair catch, a signal for inside the 10-yard line. So that will be a lousy field position, but perhaps there was a violation that will help Colorado here because there is a penalty flag down and the neutral, that two-yard measurement that you have to stay out of when somebody signals for the fair catch or is fielding a punt may or may not have been violated. McCoy was signaling for the fair catch for Colorado. And there's the, the signal. To catch the kick and that's a 10-yard penalty, and that is huge. Foul. When you make a fair catch down penalty. inside the 10-yard line, and Snyder now is talking to Roberson about that delay a game penalty and what he's looking at out there. 
McGill, number eight, was the guy who went behind thinking the ball might land on the ground where he had to down it, and the, the fair catch signal worked, and that's a real important 10 yards right there. Snyder continues to confer with his quarterback over there on the sideline about this defense that they're looking at. Robert Hodge with Craig Oaks quitting the team. And how often do you hear of a captain ever walking out on a team when he's due to start their next game? But here is Hodge now, and he needs a comfort zone. He's got to settle in. They burned his redshirt season a year ago because he wanted to play. He was recruited by Nebraska, elected to come here to Colorado. They'll run that high formation ISO. Keep the clock running. Brown gets the first carry. And here's our Alamo rent a car starting lineups. Follow number 33, folks. Brandon Drum, as good a blocking fullback as there is, out of Alaska. He'll lead the way for Chris Brown. And paging Mr. Drum is Terry Pierce, number 56. What a great battle that's going to be. Outstanding corners. Colorado's strategy is to run Newman off, not to throw at him. But they say Randy Jordan looks like he's a good one. Second down and eight now for the Buffaloes. Play fake. Hot throws. He's open underneath. Short of the first down because of a fine tackle that time. They would not let him out that time because of Terry Pierce, number 56. The dink and dunk game of Colorado. That's what they will try to do all day. Here's the offensive line, the heart of the game plan. And Lucier, number 78, the transfer from Northwestern, will move over to center for a time. Buckle up your chin strap, fellas, from K-State. They're coming right at you. Now it is third down and short. There's that eye. Follow Mr. Drum. He could lead the way on third and two. Here they come. Drum leads. Brown got the first down, and the Alaskan assassin paves the way. Both teams pride themselves in being physical up front. We saw Colorado when they made their run at the end of the big last year when they won that Big 12 championship. Up front, they go right at you. Drum, Brown, the offensive line is very physical. And really the only big difference I see from a year ago is the big tight end isn't there that really helped them run away. Jeremy wide. Bloom is in as a receiver. Wide left, run back, Brown breaks a tackle, gets to the safeties and makes his way just shy of midfield. A 17-yard run for Brown. And Brown now with three carries has 24 yards. 6'3", 220 pounds, great balance, great confidence. He knows that when he gets his hands on the ball, he's gonna fall forward and believes, like his nickname, Mr. Touchdown, Chris Brown. Bounce any checks lately? These days, banks can charge up the third Look at our Nissan drive summary, and it was a thing of beauty as Brown scores the touchdown, and Hodge goes 3-3 three three for 54 yards. Gary Danielson, you made a great point during that commercial break about Mariscal and that divot down there. Yeah, it's right next to the ball. Actually, Mariscal has moved it over, but there is still a divot. This time he does get under it. Newman is about five deep, and he's going to take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20. Well, Gary, I know you had a chance to talk to Robert Hodge, and you asked him about the offense against Kansas State. We have to play fast. We have to be a physical team. Um, Kansas State's defense is great. They have a lot of talent, and we have to just go right at them. What was your feeling about uh, about Hodge when you talked to him, Gary? I thought he was more nervous during the interviews than he was about playing the game. <laughs> and that happens when you first get thrown in there. The two weeks of practice practice has really helped him settle down. the block down. in the back on the return team. Ten-yard penalty. It'll be first down. Now, that's an interesting penalty because they took a knee in the end zone. That means that illegal block came before he made up his mind and killed the play. So somebody up on top made the illegal block very unusual when you see that on a dead ball situation and I'm gonna tell you Kansas State now has two critical penalties against them first and ten after a great return and they make it first and 15 now they are penalized back to the 10 for a first down and 10 this is tough field position now for Roberson who was having difficulty with that unusual Colorado defense he'll just keep the ball and run and he's not gonna go very far now, let's conclude our lineup here. The Alamo. Now, Thomas Barnett, an outstanding left tackle, and that time, Roberson tried to get over behind him. Now, as far as Colorado is concerned, Tyler Brayton is stepping up, but they want more leadership in that defensive front. 
Gary, as a former quarterback, what's so unusual when you look at the Colorado D here today? Colorado's defense has gone to the 4-4 front, similar to what Virginia Tech. You're going to see 100% man outside and almost eight in the box and nine in the box the whole game. All right, we got the slot now off to the right. Roberson's looking for receiver, got a man diving incomplete down low. Oh, that could have been caught. I think it was incomplete all the way, though, wasn't it? Yes, but it popped up, and I thought Billingsley almost got that ball. I thought it had come up off the ground, but I, uh... <laughs> he was wide open. The receiver's wide open, and uh, Roberson threw it right in the ground on that open slant. James Terry's wide open on the play. Ball comes in, pops up, and it uh, looks like Buck Brown. He, Brown was, was right there. Watch it pop. Hands are under it. Pops up and does it. Yeah, I think it hit the ground. Nose hit the ground. Yeah, third down now. Roberson in a pass situation, and uh, the Kansas State sideline has to be a little bit uneasy about this start here in Boulder today. Roberson gets a great block, and it's all diving reception by number eight. They're waving it off. The linesman's got it spotted at the 26-yard line. First down on the deflection, <laughs> Taco Wallace. The tip didn't go the first time off the bounce, so they came right back to the tip pass. Phil Jackson, number six reads this play beautifully out and up you're going to see it he comes back taco wallace says hey here's a free chalupa right here i'll take it brooks number 75 the right tackle threw a big time block as the defensive end had beaten him a little bit to the inside and burks was able to push him back out of the way and there's a 12 yard thank you very much for kansas state now they'll see if they can build off it ball out at the 26 yard line shotgun look now Play fake inside, here comes Roberson, a fine runner. Gets a block by the tight end, and he picks up about 14 yards out to the 40-yard line. And of course, Colorado beat up on UCLA after losing big time to USC. USC shut out Oregon State. Dennis Eriks is not used to that. Short gain as they go right ahead. Second down now and nine yards for Roberson. Roberson commits to that running game. Right straight ahead with Spurs. Number 54, Sean Tufts, playing with a broken hand, helped out defensively that time. Let's take a look at what Kansas State is going to try to do. They got two quarterbacks, and they do not run the same offense with each quarterback. When L's in there, you're going to see a little option, then the power, play action, and more finesse. When Dunn comes in the football game, they still want to run that power game, but look, all of a sudden the pocket pass game starts to come in and finesses the screens and the draws and the quick screens that he likes to run off of it. Two different looks. Travis Wilson's the fullback. Sproles the tailback, third and five. Here's that option, Roberson. Late pitch, there's a penalty flag. Sproles in space for the first down, but there is a penalty flag thrown on the play. It was thrown back by the line of scrimmage, and Roberson is up there, and it's a holding call that will bring back that game. The fourth penalty of the game for Kansas State. Again, they had 12 of them and five turnovers against USC. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty for the previous five, big third down. Now Snyder's got to come up with a passing play here. And that's out of their comfort zone. Even the last one that they picked up was knocked down by Phil Jackson, could have been intercepted. So this is not the comfort zone for L. Roberson. Joy Johnson in for the Buffaloes. He relays the signal. He's now one of the inside linebackers. From the eye, Roberson has time. Comes down the middle. Wallace and a foot race can't get there. Falls incomplete at the 15-yard line. Wallace had his man, Donald Strickland, beaten by a step. That would have been six had it been just a little bit shorter. Pretty good play call that time by Bill Snyder. If you're going to throw and make a mistake, make the mistake way deep down the field instead of getting the ball picked off inside your own 50-yard line. Here's a great story back to return this punt. And this is Jeremy Bloom. He's the mogul ski world champion. Gave up a lot of endorsement money to do just this. Looking for a seam right up the middle. Thrown down at the 26-yard line. What's up? I put up with a lot. But one thing I won't put up with is a chainsaw that always breaks down. So I use professional-grade equipment from Echo. 
Geico Outdoor Power Equipment. Only professional grade, backed by a five-year warranty. Get serious. Trade up to a... Science, you bet it is. Many kids don't understand how important these subjects can be. That's why Time Warner Cable developed Connect Million Minds to introduce kids in our communities to opportunities that inspire them to develop these important skills. How can my car go faster? Maybe your child will figure it out. Find out more at connectamillionminds.com. And the Buffaloes, having scored on their first series, come back out here with the Robert Hodge in that I formation. Drum right in front of the big running back. Brian Calhoun, and he's a fine receiver. Calhoun's only a freshman. He sprints out, and Hodge on first down is going to put it up, and he's going to try to go deep. Got a man in the foot race. Here's Calhoun. The freshman will score. Touchdown. Not even Newman can catch him. 71 yards. Oh, my, what a game plan. Give this one to Sean Watson and head coach Gary Barnett. They schemed that play. They worked on the new safety, and they caught Bobby Walker coming too close to the line of scrimmage. That was a scheme play all the way. What was interesting was watching the speed of Calhoun and then the blur. Yeah, he came the in blur. There, Terrence Newman <laughs> coming into the screen, man. It was unbelievable. So here's Brown now. Colorado is shocking. Favorite Kansas State. Hi, I'm Joe Theismann. And no matter what stadium... Defense just running with eye formation. We have to spread them out a bit. Force L. Roberson to run some options. Try to spread this defense out and, and make some things happen. Third down and it's short. They need two yards for the first down. Roberson himself will sneak for the first down inside the Colorado 40 yard line. So good field position now for Ron Hudson, who's the offensive coordinator upstairs for Bill Snyder. But Snyder very much involved with the play calling down below. They've taken a look at this uh, at this offense and the, I should say this defense. Here's this safety right here that's giving them problems. Free safety's coming out there, man to man on the outside. The safety sneaking up. Look at that. First down and ten. Picks it back up and a little bit of hesitation. We allowed him to attack that seam. And isn't it interesting, Gary? When there's a little bit of a delay, sometimes you, you well, it's just like a draw play. Really, <laughs> right. in it really was. But you know what? Something things out here for Colorado. They they won the championship last year, the Big 12 championship. But going down the stretch, they gave up points. Nebraska scored 36, Texas 37, and then Oregon 38 in the Fiesta Bowl. So Gary Barnett said, we have to change. We need to come up with a different defense. And the new deal is man to man. Cover a man and do not give up the box. Three wide to the right for L. Roberson. But he will run it behind the fullback. And he is down at the 30-yard line. This will leave him with about a third and three. So Sims puts it up 46 times today. And it'll be interesting to see what kind of game plan Mac Brown has for the Sooners next week. Again, Oklahoma plays Missouri later today in the Big 12. Here's Roberson and one man Bain breaks free. Cuts away from Jackson. And brought down from behind at the two-yard line. Walrus caught him. But the Wildcats are in business with a 28-yard run for Roberson. Hey, give, this one, give this one to Ron Hudson. Kansas State came with their elephant backfield. They call it their big Nick backfield. Vic, Nick, and Thick. Only this time they faked to the big guy, and Roberson kept it. That was a good game plan. Roberson gets into the secondary, beats Billingsley, the free safety, and uh, you see what Roberson gives up. An extra running back in the backfield. Since he's rushed for 82 yards already, he might as well keep it right in his hand. 
and let him go right straight ahead. They've given him Victor Mann in this Moose backfield look. Three fullbacks, and they'll, they'll hand it off, and nothing doing. And uh, Mann is the redshirt freshman from Fort Worth, Texas. He could not get into the end zone. I don't know why he just don't say, go get it for me, number three. Well, that and uh, Ayosaba, number uh, 36, is the guy, is the big one by tailback also. But I don't know. I, I, I think keeping Spoils in the game is not a bad idea. Well, then you have the threat the of the option. Yeah, then you have the threat of the option when you have Sproles in the football game. Here he is, back in. Sproles, end zone, touchdown, K-State. Two plays away, and there's the first one. Well, the defense got to stop, and all of a sudden, Roberson's running really has kept Colorado's defense off balance just enough. The left side of their line is their best side of the line. Barnett and Lecky is over there, 65 and 53, and they run right by him. This is the swinging gate that Kansas State uses a lot in their field goal. A shift. They have gone for two out of that swinging gate look. Jared Bright. on the extra point. What do you do with your... Let's drive summary. The final yard in that drive, of course, was the touchdown scored by Sproles. And so now Kansas State trailing at 14-7. Right with the ball on the tee. Calhoun and Sneed are back. And this one will go completely out of the end zone. He's done very well with his car dealerships that he sold in this area. Play fake now by Hodge. Gets time, deflected, incomplete. And that was a nice defensive play by Rashad Washington. The junior from Wichita, number two, making a good play, Gary. Former running back has moved over to strong safety this year. And that time he had man-to-man -man coverage on the tight end. You can see it starting to evolve right here. Bobby Elliott, defensive coordinator for the Kansas State, is saying, all right, let's just find our guy, stay with him, keep our linebackers in the box. We must stop the run first, and then let our secondary guys take care of the pass. Colorado was stopped on its last series. Option look, Hodge, penalty flags come flying. Before the snap occurred, false start on the offense. Five yards, second down. Now it is Colorado starting to make mistakes. And it is time for our Affleck trivia question this week. What Kansas State alum is a star of the senior PGA Tour? It has a golf course named after him in Manhattan, Kansas. We always talk about Hale Irwin, the great golfer who played football here in Colorado, but now, which K State alum? You people in Manhattan, you're not eligible to answer that one. That one's too easy. That was a gift. That's a home run. Second down and 15. Shotgun look. There's that delay with Brown. Bashing his way. Number seven, Josh Buell, fine linebacker right there, makes the stop. Need 14 yards, the Buffaloes. They're backed up third and 14. There's a lot of folks here wearing purple from Kansas State. There is the toss now to Purify, tries to run it wide, shy of the 20. Tank Reese, number 30, says no further. That was a good call, I think, by Colorado. They did not want to force a mistake down in their own territory. Robert Hodge, if you're going to let him throw when you got the lead, do it on your terms, not on the defensive terms. I think that's a good situation to just punt the ball and say, defense, stop their quarterback this time. Now Newman would dearly love to give him field position. Mariscal will hit this from inside his 10. Looks like he's angled to the sideline as he stands, doesn't it, Mariscal? They told us they were going to punt it out of bounds. They do not. He drills it to the wind. Here he comes. He bobbles it, picks it up at the 20, beats the first man, looks for the steam in the arms of the Buffalo. I use catheters, and if you do too, please listen carefully to this life-changing break. Visit ConnectedMillionMinds.com and take the pledge.
They need moisture up and down the Rocky Mountain area. 14 7 now. Roberson and Kansas State down with Roberson again changing it up at the line of scrimmage. Sproles is his tailback in that deep spot back there. And Roberson going to pull it out. He's going to look downfield. He's going to go deep. Walks on the juggle. Got it. Incomplete. They wave it off. It looked for a moment like Taco had himself a big game. But he just let it slip away. Robeson made a nice throw here, Brent. He had pressure right in his face as he let this. This is right off the option. But Taco Wallace had this ball, jumped when he really didn't need to, and then never really had control. And as he hit the ground, he's bobbling it. They called it incomplete. Roberson throw it in, and just as he lets it go, you see how he almost go backwards as he let the ball go, because Marcus Harris is right in his face. I'll tell you, Strickland got up on Wallace and helped draw that ball loose, too. Second down and 10. Here comes Roberson, still got it in a dash. Open field. Tried to get a block from the receiver. Got it! Sideline! They won't get him! Touchdown! The Wildcats! They come back with their own 71-yard touchdown. It's the magic number of the day as Roberson does it. And credit number 82, James Terry, the wide receiver, with clearing the way. He got the final block on the corner. Watch how they run the option here without a pitch man, but they do. Sproles is going to come on the right side of your screen as the pitch man. You see him right here. That's what allowed Roberson to run the play up the middle. They used the slot option, and then James Terry gets the push down deep. Phil Jackson falls down, and Roberson's doing it almost by himself. Bright for the tie. Got it. Indeed, by himself. Roberson, 12 carries, 153 yards, and one touchdown. Another beautifully designed play. We called it a chess match early. Both coaches have been designing plays to get big plays. Bill Snyder, Ron Hudson has countered against Sean Watson and Gary Barnett, both coaches coming out. Well, Jack Aru went to Manhattan, the little Manhattan, if you will, and he asked Dell about his thought process before a play. Here's what he had to say. I want to get everybody up to the line of scrimmage, and I want to check my play clock and see how much time I have, and then I'll look to the defense, see where the safeties are, follow my linebackers, and just just get a feeling of what they're doing around in the secondary. Rahel Roberson has not done it with his arm, but he has done it as a running quarterback today. Again, there's no tailback here on the option. So when you fake, Colorado says, who are you going to pitch to? But the design of the play was to put your tailback out wide and have him back up to be the designated pitch man, a beautifully designed play. Terry with that good downfield block. We told you when it was 14-0 that the one thing we'd experience with Snyder and Kansas State was a very patient, well-coached football team. They would take it a play at a time. They have now had a time to study this unorthodox defense. Not so unorthodox. You just don't see it in college football that much. And they certainly now have come up with some solutions. There's that high Calhoun. The freshman makes a mistake. Out of bounds. At the seven yard line, tough field position. First down and 10 now for the Buffaloes. They are up 14 0. Now they're in a dogfight. Browns that eye back. On the toss. Behind Drum. Cuts inside. Well, it is certainly worth another look, Gary, and you can't say enough about the block he gets. Here's Sproles right here. The big block is going to happen down here in man-to-man -man coverage, but usually you don't run an option when you don't have anybody to pitch to, but you see how Sproles backs up as the pitch right there? This is reminiscent to me, Brent, of Bradley Van Pelt and what Colorado State did to Colorado. Remember Van Pelt that day had a big game against this team, and it looks like that game tape got a lot of viewing over in Manhattan. You bet. Van Pelt had a long touchdown run against Fresno State last night. But Colorado State comes up two points shy on the two-point conversion. Here's Brown again. And uh, 
Back in the end zone to my left and behind the play. Folks, you would think we're in Manhattan, Kansas. <laughs> I mean, look at that back there. I mean, yeah. there's not, you know, there's a few Colorado. There's a, what's going on here? And, and every one of those, Brent, on the way here asked you to not to be, be fair with Kansas State today, uh, did they? I understand why. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Just about every one of them. I recognize all those guys. Come on, Brent. Come all, on, Brent. All to say something nice. <laughs> we want some love. Okay. Hey, when your quarterback goes for 12 for 153, you get some love. Exactly. Third down and seven. Now, Dak moved along with him, but he got his foot set again. Hit on the release. If that's a fumble, it's a free ball. No incomplete pass. The linesman is waving it off. He is saying incomplete pass. The linesman had the view. It was close, folks, real close. Yeah, the game referee was right behind there. John Bible was right behind the play, too, signaling a complete pass. But, boy, Hodge sets back. This is not his comfort zone. And coming as he gets ready to throw, Melvin Williams. And, yes, it looked like his arm had started that as a correct call. Kansas State has taken control of this game. Now the punter backed up inside his end zone. Mariscal. He hit one 61 yards last time. He needs another 60-yarder here. Drills it. About 54 yards. Measured from the goal line. So he hit it longer than that. Spoils the return man. There's a penalty flag down. The K-State will be working with half a field right now. Eight minutes to go here. We'll get the call and we'll take a quick break and come back to watch the K-State offense. Or, or Roberson, one of the same thing, right? <laughs> Illegal block in the back on the return team. 10 yards from where the run ended, first down. The He's out to the right side of the formation right here. There he is, number four. They're going to motion him and see what Colorado's going to do. They're going to give it to him on a handoff. All kinds of penalty flags come flying. I think it was an illegal formation. They either had 12 men or they didn't have enough men on the line of scrimmage. So Terrence Newman, he wants the ball. And we ask him about that, and here's what he had to say. The thrill of being out there and being chased, you know, it's 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 different for me because I'm usually doing the chasing and now I'm the one trying to loot all the tacklers. Folks, he is not a track man dabbling in football. He's a football player who happens to be very, very fast. Someone here by the name of Eric the Enemy said he'd seen a couple of fellas in the NFL who could move like that. One happens to be Deion Sanders, and he was the fastest defensive back I ever saw during his college days but if this fella can run like that and play football like Dion he's got a long long career ahead of him. as a matter of fact my friends down with the Kansas City Chiefs there's a guy here's your shutdown corner get number four tied at 14 now with eight minutes to go Newman was in and now he's back on the sideline Danny Morris and Darren Sproles there's that delay with Sproles. Cuts to the hole. He's up, guys. He's up here. Second and 12. Option look. Pitch. Sproles is going to throw it. Wants Taco Wallace. Strickland slips, but the ball was not that well thrown. Strickland slipped. Trying to keep up with Wallace, and he's having a little difficulty handling him over there, although it's going to be a great battle today. A little bit of a surprising call there to me. Second and long, Colorado really was thinking pass. You see Strickland, he's man-to-man -man all the way. The ball is now thrown, but as he turns for it, uh, he might have been able to get to it, but it was well overthrown. Good job of reading the play and doing your assignment. Roberson needs 12. Three wides for Kansas State, and Sproles a running back. Roberson goes straight back, hit on the release, incomplete. And K-State is forced to punt, and Roberson takes a hit that time. In on top of him was Tyler Brayton. That was the wide receiver screen that time. The offensive line was allowing that Colorado rush to come inside, but Roberson could not find Taco Wallace again. They've been trying to go to Taco, but they have not been able to get to him. Travis Brown punting and Jeremy Bloom the skier back deep. 
Standing inside the Colorado 15 yard line. 7 12 left here in the first half. Looking for a Bloom return. There's a penalty flag. Bloom to Daylight. Oh, he is slammed at the 30 yard line. We do have a penalty flag back on the 40 yard line. Pretty sure Colorado was holding right after the punt that time. One of the inside men. Now they're deciding whether it was before the ball was punted. I think it was after. It was very close because it happened inside the line of scrimmage. This is such a pivotal game for both of these teams in the Big 12 North here today. Both wanting to jumpstart their season with uh, Nebraska in a bit of a decline. The, the winner here could well be Holding the favorite the along with Iowa State. It'll be 10 yards from the previous spot. It'll remain fourth down. He looked over there to see if it was going to give him a first down, but it did not because it was fourth down and 12. Now Bloom goes back deep, and it's interesting that Newman's going to try to come down the field on this punt. Now I think they're going to bring him off. He was out there for a moment, and now he comes off. Well, Terry Pierce made the big and hit take last Bloom time. Bloom out on the other side. So Pierce got downfield on Bloom. They'll take him out there. Run McCoy in now. Fresh set of hands back there on the 10-yard line. Now, if you're Colorado, you probably have to stay. Defense stays and you make sure. Watch the fake here yes. in this situation. Yep, back looks like the big bruising linebacker. They go ahead with a great punt. The wind's got this one. Great punt. Knocked out of bounds at the seven yard line. If you're tired of stabbing your finger. Take the pledge. Well, we've had these three, not big, huge plays, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Two 71 yarders and a moment ago, the 85 yarder from Brown. We've had 268 yards of offense for Colorado and 206 for Kansas State. So we've had almost 500 yards of offense here in the first half. And uh, they send the punter, Travis Brown, the senior from Overland Park, Kansas, back onto the field. He'll try to get this one down inside the 10. He did a brilliant job last time, but the defense let Brown out with the 85-yarder. Bloom will go back and stand at the 10-yard line. Pierce, late arriving. And now they've got 12 men on the field, I believe, or no, they're just uh, readjusting one of the gunners. They're both going to come down left, so he's going to aim it in that direction. This one, the wind's got it. But he got it inside the 10-yard line, out at the four. It'll be marked down there. The referee and the field judge line up with each other, and that's going to be marked right at the five-yard line. Well, two good teams. I can't wait to get there, but I can't wait to watch the rest of this game. Remember, Kansas State has all three timeouts remaining. They would love to force a punt here. Chris Brown, who went 85, he's the eye back. Coming again. And this time, Kansas State jumps it. The handoff now to Brown is buried at the five. How much time do we have? 238. Corey White. Snyder wants one more crack at it before the intermission, Gary. Everybody's looking at Coach Snyder or whether he wants to use a timeout. He's going to play it a little safe. There's plenty of time left. He'll wait until after third down before he'll use his timeout. There's our offensive leaders here, Gary. Well, you can see the big throw to Calhoun. It's been a quiet day in the passing game. They needed Brown to come through, and he did on that third and short. Again, a very dangerous situation for Colorado, putting Robert Hodge in the situation where he has to throw. Purify checks in at running back. And Bloom, one of the wideouts. In fact, he's the only wide receiver. K-State of Manning. Play fake. Hodge going to look for him. Going to go to Bloom. Bloom breaks free. He's got it. Foot race. Here comes Jeremy Bloom. Headed for the end zone. They won't get him. Touchdown. It's big play 
Saturday in Boulder, Colorado. 271s and 85 and a 94. It was third and long. Kansas State went man to man, and Jeremy ran a stutter and go. Another call by Colorado to say if you're going to make a mistake, make it way down there. Now Bloom tacks on the extra point. You know, you talk about Bloom, and they recruited him to return punts. But in high school here in Colorado, he was an outstanding receiver. I believe it was up in Fort Collins. Down here at the bottom, he's matched up against Randy Jordan. Watch him come up and stutter. Stutter right there. Jordan bites, and that's all it is. There's no safety on the field. It's pitch and catch. And then Jeremy at the end here thought he had the clocking right there and almost stopped a little too slow soon. Now don't be throwing those poles up in the air That's too exactly fast. exactly right. Look at this. Watch his stutter. What a beautiful move. Comes out, bit on very badly by Randy Jordan that time. Jordan could never get back into it, and Bloom says, I'm going to go all the way on this one. I've never seen this many big plays in a football game. Third and long, and they stay no free safety. And Terrence Newman, you know, he could go over to Coach Barnett and say, come on, Coach, throw me one pass on my side of the field. Everything's gone on the other side. They have stayed away from him. He's not even getting, he's got to come at a severe angle. I'm surprised he wasn't over there covering that time because Colorado only had one wide receiver that time. You know what I'd do, Gary? I'd move him back to safety and let him play center Maybe. field. Maybe. At least they wouldn't go all the way. Absolutely. I'd get him off the corner. There's that pooch. Short ground in there. And that was Andy Clock, the linebacker. There's that short pooch punt. So let's see. We've got 143 now for Schneider's offense. Roberson will come back out here. Let's take one more. Here's Newman right over here. Only one wide receiver, and the matchup is to here. Newman, again, keep him out of the game. These two guys come back and block. He's just standing there on this big play. Watch this. Newman says, I can't do anything with my speed standing over here. So that's great yeah, coaching. Absolutely. That's what you do. You got to saw guy. where Newman was going when they went one wide like that, Gary, to the short side. He was moving up, cheating on that right side, if you will. And they have really game planned to stay away from number four. They have not thrown one at him yet. No, and they don't intend to. Timeout is called by K-State. They didn't get it in time. Delay a game. Well, Gary, they picked the flag up, so it's going to be first and ten. Roberson was able to get the timeout uh, called. The, uh, the officials confer with each other. Over here, Mark Dunn, the senior, transferred from junior college in Ricks, Idaho. He's getting ready probably for the uh, second half if they get into that passing game. You can't do any of these check with me's like this. This crowd realizes that they're being very savvy, and every time they try to, they get louder. Hit on the release. Wallace grabs it. Beautiful catch and steps out of bounds at the 41 yard line. Taco Wallace looks like a big time receiver to me. Well, he's got the ball almost every time, and, and you know the Colorado coaches told us that the go-to guy was Taco Wallace. And nearly every downfield throw has been at Taco Wallace. This time, the ball is laid up. And that ball was put in the only spot it could be. The Wildcats with one timeout left. A minute and a half to work with. Here comes Roberson, hit on the release, intercepted at the 40-yard line. Picked off by Drew Walrus, that senior linebacker from Poway, California. Roderick Sneed. Penalty flag the is Rover. now thrown. Number 26 is the guy that got Roberson on that one, coming from behind. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct on Colorado. 15-yard penalty, first down. Is that that celebration deal? Yeah, it must have been. Watch it coming off. Roberson get hit just as he was trying to throw that ball. Sneed is coming from the outside right here and gets him. 
Number 26 comes around. They had a man on him to block him, Danny Morris, but he went right around Morris, hit him, and the ball went right there for the interception. The first interception thrown by L. Roberson this year. Now, take another look at this. And Walrus, who has played brilliantly defensively, comes up with the interception on the play. And now for the shotgun, Hodge. And Newman was finally thrown at and Troy wanted an interference. I'm going to tell you, that is dangerous to come over there. Wow, had he gotten that ball? That is adios. Really surprised by that. You got a 28 14 man to man to the outside. He's just staring inside and he goes, look at that. If he wouldn't have tripped over his feet right there, he might have gobbled that for a cheap seven points. Don't want to get arrogant. No, Don't want to get overconfident. You got a long time to go. Again, K State, two big plays away. They'll be back in the thick of this. They always are. Purify, pound straight ahead. Now they'll start to work on the clock. Bobby Purify, I remember the Big 12 championship when uh, Gary Barnett ran what? That fake punt down. Oh, yeah. That, that was a lot of that, wasn't it? <laughs> Man, I think Gary Barnett went over to Sean Watson and said, uh uh. We are not doing that. I want to go off the field. He just leaned in again and said something. He let Sean call the plays, but he said, I want to go off 28 14. Oh, absolutely. Settle down, settle down. They go five wide. How about a quarterback draw? Five wide to shotgun. That'd be a good call. How's a good runner? Good call, Gary. Out to the right side. It was a run all the way for Hodge. He's got to stay in bounds. And he stops the clock. And is there a penalty flag? Yes, there is. Now they're going to call this off. The back official called it, but I think he got his helmet instead of his face mask. The referee will pick it up, I think. The flag is, he will be disregarded. Up. Disregard the flag, no face mask. All right, now we've got. Uh, now Snyder's trying to get the clock. He's trying to pick up a few more seconds up here if he can. <laughs> now everybody's upset. Well, they showed the replay on the big board, and the fans think he did get the face mask. Oh, he breaks right across it. <laughs> There's no question, folks. Look at that. That's Randy Jordan. Gets him on the top, and then does he get it on the face mask? I don't know. It was close, but the official from in front of the play said no foul. But now K-State has got what they wanted. They're going to get the ball back, and they do not send Newman back deep. That means they'll go they for the send block. Sproles back, and they're lined up. They'll go for the block. Ten across that front. They're going to come at him. Mariscal's one of the best punters in college football. Drills it. What a great punt. Sproles. Spins. Sideline out of bounds. Down at the 26-yard line. Is this what college football is all about? 71-yard touchdowns. These fans 85. know exactly what they're looking for. They saw a block in the back, and they were reacting. They wanted another penalty call. Now let's see if it's Roberson or they send Dunn on. Yeah, Roberson's got the helmet on, steps into that huddle. We saw Dunn warming up. Uh, you almost have to take a knee here, don't you? Either that or throw the ball really deep. You got 25 seconds. They got three wide to the right. They run the draw play to bring the clock on down, and uh, Snyder does not want to risk a turnover here with Wilder, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, making the stop. And the final seconds will tick away here. Well, if you like action, you've come to the right spot. Six touchdowns. Four of them 70 yards or longer. Let's go to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Coach, outside of a couple of big plays, that's been the difference for your team. Well, three big plays have really cost us the 14-point uh, disadvantage up to this point in time. So, A, we have to stop the big plays. B, we got to be able to tackle better. Uh, obviously, we've got to sustain something on offense a little bit more than what we have. 
uh, some basic fundamental things about getting the lined up on defense and making sure that we're assignment sound going to help us a little bit too. Coach, will you stay with Mel Roberson in the second half? Uh, we'll find out. Okay, Coach. tune in. <laughs> stay tuned, Jack. <laughs> Hi, I'm. Thank you. Our Pacific Life game summary, and it has been an afternoon of big plays. Four touchdowns, longer than 70 yards, and look at the total offense. 368 yards already for Colorado against UCLA. I think George Hill told me it was about 477, but how does K-State get back here? Well, they have to do what they did before. Roberson needs to run the ball if they're going to keep Roberson in the game. If Dunn comes in, obviously they're going to throw the ball, but they have to stop those big plays. Colorado will bring it out on the 20-yard line. Hodge, 10 throws, Brent, for 221 yards. They flex the tight end, Sipniewski. They open with him, and they open with Bobby Purify as the running back on first down. And he makes his way out just short of the 25-yard line. And Josh Buell, a junior from Mesquite, Texas. Man, we run into a lot of football players in the Big 12 from Mesquite, Texas. Tough hombres down there. They also like their rodeos at night down there. The bull riders hold forth in Mesquite. Here's old Josh, number seven now. Brown comes out a little bit late. Purify starts in that backfield. He's perhaps getting a little extra treatment. Second down and seven now. A little motion for Robert Hodge. He faked and rolled to the right. Did a throw underneath to the second man. And drum the fullback for the first down, Colorado. The Alaskan assassin. First day we watched over and over. Robert Hodge practiced this. Fake the running play, come out of the bootleg, and throw it to the fullback for tight end. There you see pure oh, no. drums gonna come this way and come out to the flat. You fake the handoff and drum sneaks underneath, and that's easy pitch and catch. Hodge is saying, oh, you mean you can throw short too? I didn't know that. You're ruining my stats, coach. Let me go deep again. Number seven. He's replaced number one, Craig Oaks, who quit. Fake. Roll hard right, wants down middle, got an open man, got him. First down into K-State territory as Hodge on the move hits Derek McCoy, the junior, for 26 yards. Man, I'll tell you the one thing that impresses me is how accurate Hodge has been. We talk about big plays. Gary, he has put the big plays right where they have to be. He's throwing when he has to, but this time, Brent, they went at number four, Newman, and McCoy beat him. In fact, Newman held on the play. He's lucky he didn't get a penalty and a completion. Just McCoy in. beat Newman clean. Just inside the 40-yard line. Line up to the eye formation. Come back with Brown to the 33-yard line where it'll be second down for the Buffaloes. They lead by two touchdowns twice in this game. They have been up by two touchdowns. They went out 14-0. K-State battled back to deadlock it, and then Colorado scored the last two touchdowns in the first half. Let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Brent, Chris Brown was late coming out of the locker room. Why? Because they were filling him full of fluids. It seems he got very dehydrated during halftime. They had to give him several IVs. And he's back out there carrying the ball. Bloom is split far out to the left. Hodge rolls in that direction. Now he'll keep it himself. Thrown down at the 32, short of the first down by the tank. Reese, the senior, transferred in from the JC in Hutchinson, Kansas. Kansas State. Wayne Lucer, number 78, has been pulling all day. He was the center on this Colorado team last year. They moved him to that guard spot, and you watch Lucer right here. He goes opposite the motion and comes out. Number 78, a center showing his versatile play as a guard now in this game, and he's doing it all. Now Purify in at the running back on third and four. Remember, good receiver. So they send him out now, basically a slot man. Hodges back, looking underneath. Got his underneath man, short of the first down. And they'll, they'll mark it down. It was a catch, but this will leave Colorado with a decision right around the 32-yard line. D.J. Hackett was the receiver on that play. Barnett has got the call.
Well, you know Gary Barnett loves to have a gimmick in his, off his offense and his special teams. He is the special teams coordinator, basically. This would be a good time to do one. Patrick Brome is on the field with a 14-point lead, and uh, now Colorado will use a timeout. We're back, and Barnett's offense has dashed onto the field. He's livid that the official on the sideline told him they were ready to go. Kansas State had a few precious seconds to readjust. They were not totally ambushed. Fourth down and three. Hodges going to throw back. Wide open. First down at the 22-yard line as Robert Hodge breaks it wide open to Sam Wilder, a defensive tackle who checks in and is eligible as a receiver. You see it, everybody thinks Hodge is gonna come out and go to the outside, but it's the throwback screen. Eligible on the backside, Wilder was lined up as a tight end, and uh, another great scheme for Colorado. A first down inside the 25-yard line, now the toss play, and the big fella spins his way inside the 20-yard line, where it will be second down. Now here is Chris Brown for the first half 129 yards and 14 carries two touchdowns and yards after contact that's the most impressive thing there for the big fella. Well it must have been 85 on one play at the of scrimmage because he had that long run was the only one he really got out there. Second down seven yards to go. Check it out Chris Brown. To the three yard line. That was Chris who did stay in. Terry Pierce runs him out of bounds. Newman went down on the other side of the field, and I wonder if there wasn't a block that got him way away from the play. John Donahoe, number 85, goes down and throws on Newman. You got to be aware at all time. And he landed right on his tailbone. That's what you got to do. Game of football. Everybody's out there ready to hit. They intended to. Coach Snyder is now out. And Terrence will come off for at least a play. Newman shaken up. Comes off. And now Bobby Purify checks in as the tailback. And here comes Purify. Struts the defense. Can't get to the high line. Down at the five yard line. It'll be second down and goal, Ted Juan. The redshirt freshman from Topeka, Kansas, makes the stop. I think that's a good, a good adjustment by Bobby Elliott, defensive coordinator. They put Ted Juan in there, and we're not getting good tackling from their safeties. Remember, this team, this Kansas State team, lost a couple safeties. John McGraw drafted by the Jets. Colorado knew they could pick on him, and they've had to make an adjustment back there. Too wide. Purify the long running back here on second down and goal from the five. There's the flag. Now I'll give him half the distance and a fresh set of downs. Randy Jordan, it looked like, did he grab his hand? It looked like he grabbed something and the ball was in the air while he did it. McCoy, good size to the outside, 6-3. Jordan, I don't know if he got him with his left hand or not. It looked like he grabbed him with his left hand. Yeah, the left hand interference in the end zone. Newman's back on the field. That's good news for Kansas State. So it's a first and goal. Chris Brown, the battering ram, he scored twice today. There's Drum stepping up to lead the way. Here comes Brown, battling toward the end zone. Just short that time. They don't care if it's a giveaway. When Drum moves up right behind the quarterback, Andrew Schull managed to stuff that play for Barnett. Well, you yeah. remember last year, Brent, it was Andre Girard, the guard, pulling guard that uh, did lead the way with Drum. This year, Lassure is in that spot, and he's just following. Second Chris Brown is following Drum, and Lassure and says, I like my chances. Drum trying to shake it off a little bit. They might come right back to it. Here they come. 
Brown dove away from him that time to the left and a short. And now you've got third and goal. But the one thing they have not shown us is Hodge on an option look down here. He's out of a El Camino College, Hodge California. He's an outstanding running quarterback. Yeah, and Hodge is, uh, Brent Hodge is going to the bench and saying, you know, after I hand it off, no one checked me on that play. I could fake and bootleg and really get outside. Great play in this situation is to call the dive and then not give it to Brown. The linemen really follow through on that. Now let's see what happens. Third down and goal. Hodge is going to throw on the run. Back wide open. Touchdown. Breaking wide open was Jesse Wallace. A coverage mistake. And Wallace clears. And it's 34-14, Colorado. Tight end sneak right here is Wallace. He'll block down and then just go across the field right there. Block down, all the flow goes one way, throw back, and what a day for Robert Hodge. 11 for 15, three touchdown passes. And Brown tacks on another extra point. A three touchdown lead for Colorado. Gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Buffalo fans are enjoying this one. Kansas State still has two linebackers set back, and that's where the pooch punts kickoffs have been going to. They're going to say, bring it on. Newman will take a knee. Seven o'clock. Can't beat it. Here's a handoff now. Spurs. Down at the 20-yard line. That's Walrus. Man, Walrus, except for these explosive plays on offense, Walrus has been the most valuable player on defense, I think, for Colorado. Well, Kansas State has not been able to run the ball directly at Colorado. They've had to use the option of the quarterback to run the ball. Sproul so far, eight attempts, 35 yards. A lot of great games going on. Wisconsin, Penn State. Oregon State, UCLA, they were both close. We'll get you an update here in a minute. Here's Wilderson. Handoff, middle open. Spurs breaks free. He's headed for the end zone. Only Strickland can get there. 80 yard touchdown. Another big play. Darren Sproles. Sproles sometimes is so small you can't see him, as Jack Arute said, and right there you can see him pop out of nowhere. A 10-man front in the box that time by Colorado, and they popped it right through there. They held him all the way, and then against 10-man front, they go 80 yards. Figure it out. Right. Tax on the extra point. It's not like they didn't run into the teeth of the defense. Here's the box. Colorado has nine guys in the box. And right up the center goes Sproles. And there's no one. Moore misses the tackle. Number 17, who was in the box that time, didn't make the play. And you have your safety up around sniffing. If he misses it, you see what happens. Sneed. Penalty flag comes flying. That totals 401 yards in big plays here today. 400 out of the 750 yards have been touchdowns in one play. 750 yards roughly total offense, and 400, 450 of them have been touchdowns. I promise you an update again, but we'll probably have an 85-yard <laughs> touchdown here. First and 10. Comes Purify. Got the corner penalty flag. And uh, let's see, Hodges 90 yards away. He's got the defense just where he wants it. This is just where he wants to be. This is the red zone for Robert Hodge. Purifies his running back. 
drills on, batters his way. Uh, I wonder if uh, Randy Jordan, number nine, has gotten benched. He is not in the football game. I don't know if he's injured, but he's been beaten a couple times in this football game, and now he's not out there. Jesse Tetwan, number 33, has replaced him. Well, this is the first time that, uh, that we have noticed that he is out. I think you're exactly right, Gary, that they have made that change. Yep, Jordan's okay. They've moved Newman to the wide side of the field now. Newman's down here. He used to be to the other side almost the whole game. Second and ten. Hodge on a play fake and he had hit backside. Got it off and complete. And a penalty flag. But Hodge under enormous pressure. That may have been his best pass from the Hit on the release. He looked like a big time college quarterback as he hit Melvin Williams. Williams with a touchdown catch. I think Terrence Newman number four. Is he gonna get one? Yeah, you're gonna get holding again, Newman. The pass is thrown. Ten yards previous spot, first down. Newman's on the bottom, playing man-to-man -man defense. He's got Bloom right there, and he says, you're not running any moguls on me. And yeah, mogul this. There's the automatic first down one way or the other, right? You can see the frustration on Kansas State. They're completely off balance on defense. Melvin Williams was in all over the quarterback that time. You know, an interesting Colorado. I think Kansas State expected it to be a power football game. They expected their linebackers, Pierce and Hickman and Buell, to be the stories of the game. It hasn't been. Yeah, Robert Hodge says, I want the completion. It was my best throw of the day. <laughs> They've got a first down at the 26-yard line. On a handoff now and purify. Chris Brown in as the running back. Here's Brown. Kansas State shuts him. Third down and eight for the Buffaloes. Bloom is out here with Newman to the top. Bring the end around with McCoy, and it was read beautifully by Josh Buell. Number seven jumped that play. It had no chance. Still a football game here. Kansas State got a stop. They needed it. Get the ball back. And Newman this time will go back to return the punt. Never let up in college. There's so many more possessions in a college football game than there is in an NFL game. There's two touchdowns down. They send Sproles back with him. Mariskell, been an outstanding punter here today. Sproles this one. Sproles inside the 20 yard line. Newman with a fine block. And Sproles is down at the 31 yard line. Top of the hour here in the Boulder, Colorado. Kansas State forced to play catch up here. Roberson has thrown for 46, but look what he's run for 146 yards and a touchdown. And I believe we have an injured Buffalo player down at the. Uh, 31 yard line back there in the back, JJ Billingsley. And both of them playing extremely well. Texas was scared to death today by the Cowboys from Oklahoma State. Hung on, I believe that final was 17 15. Billingsley now trots out, and Roberson set to go at quarterback. Medford Moore, number 70, helped lead the defense that time. No matter what Kansas State does to try to reduce this Colorado front, Colorado says, uh -uh, we're just going to play man to man and keep our safety in the box. They don't believe Roberson is going to throw the ball against them, and Gary Barnett says, stop the run first. 
Second down and six. Wallace comes behind Roberson. And he sprays, and this time, nothing doing because of Wilder's tackle. Sam Wilder says, I caught a pass, now I caught a tailback. <laughs> Number 90 right here in the middle of it. Takes it on. Takes on two guys, spins right through the double team. That's a tough one for Kansas State to live with. You double team the down tackle, he splits it and handles the tailback. Third down for Roberson and K-State. Wildcats need six. They've got almost 10 in the box. The clock is coming down on him. He's got to hurry, got it off. No, he did not. Penalty flag, throws it up deep to the tight end, and Hill has got it, but there's a penalty flag. Thomas Hill. Uh, I think you're going to see rough in the passer on this, aren't you? Or did it go before? It was go before there was, it, what, was it really? on the uh, The uh. clock was a big issue in this thing. It was real it close. It was really close. You know, the, both the lines and the linesmen threw it too. Offside on the defense, that penalty is declined. Personal foul, roughing the there passer on the defense. The 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. That was right. The zero was hitting just as he snapped the ball. Roberson just threw it up for grabs and got McGee his receiving tight end on that play. Hill makes the oh, catch. Oh, I'm sorry, but was it Hill? <laughs> play action, he called it. Remember, he audible threw it, and then took a hit right at the end of that play from Surratt. That's a good call. Held it right to the chest. And it gives K-State a first down inside the 20-yard line. Daniel Davis. Checks in at running back. He's a whiz. Spins inside the 15, number six. He's interesting on his the punt team. And when he comes downfield, because the punter is number six, he switches over to number 25. Let's see if we don't see that formation where they run the option with Spurls in the slot. They have not showed it. Rolls back in as the running back. Checking again. Runs the option. Here comes Roberson for the trying to break free. Out of bounds on the fumble. And it'll be K-State ball. First and goal on the Roberson run. Roberson checked to the option on that one. And Travis Wilson, the fullback, watch here. Watch him come in low to the outside and block the man who thought he had the quarterback. Comes out, comes in and gets the hit right on Wolves right there. That's from Roberson. The ball is knocked loose right at the end of the play, but goes out of bounds. L. Roberson today yes. has run for 161 yards. He has been a brilliant runner here today. Now spoils, touchdown, K-State. His third of the afternoon, and K-State is about to close to within one score. You know, Brent, I really don't believe in momentum in sports. Colorado seemed to have everything going for him, and all of a sudden, Kansas State goes back down and scores two touchdowns. They, again, just keep playing, just keep playing, just keep playing. I thought we had the momentum in Cleveland, and John Elway took it 98 yards against us. Remember that one? Yes, indeed. <laughs> the drive. And here it's bright. Attacking on the extra point as Sproul scores for the third time here today. Now, he's rushed for better than 100 yards. He's at 118 yards. We have 300-yard runners in this game already. And this offensive line is starting to handle that front. Again, Wilson, Travis Wilson, the transfer right there. Look at that block by the fullback. Drum and Wilson have done a good job matching each other. Fullbacks blocking on linebackers.
leads Kansas State by a touchdown, but the Wildcats face a fourth down, and they are not even thinking about the field goal attempt here. The ball is on the four-yard line, and they must go to just short of the two-yard line for a first down. Remember the design of this defense is not to let you run wide. I'm thinking Kansas State's going to go right at them. They've been successful. No matter what the coach thinks, Roberson never stops changing up. Here comes the option wide. Here's the pitch. In a foot race, won't get the first down. Strickland comes up with a huge one. Someone has to tell me why they didn't kick the field goal. I mean, I, does he have that little confidence in you? I mean, there's eight minutes to go in this football game. There's a uh, now there's a penalty flag. Was that an excess celebration after Strickland unloaded? Here's Strickland out here. He has to cover his man and react late. The option goes wide. The pitch is made a little early. The fullback falls down and look at Strickland come up and knock him backwards. <laughs> Possession was changed because not enough yardage was gained after the play was over. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Colorado. 15 yard penalty. That's what happened. They celebrated that hit over there. Just what I speculated might have happened. Now he said on Colorado, but he pointed the other way. Uh, it was on Colorado. Okay, so he's going to. They were jumping up and down yeah. over that sideline over there. I don't think there's any question. He's going to he's going to walk it off half the distance in that. Yeah, he right. changed his point. Okay, let's watch Strickland. Got to cover his man. Got to cover his man. And then Taco Wallace says the fake doesn't go, and he comes right out. The leading tackler for this football team, Colorado Buffaloes, makes the big stop of the game. Must have been Tawny okay. right there on the sideline. Looked like he got right in his face. As a result, the Buffaloes are backed up to the two-yard line. Robert Hodge under the gun here. Safety first. It's Brown. Second down and seven. The changeup has put Newman on the man-to-man -man coverage to the outside. Safety first again. Brown battling, carrying a couple defenders with him, but short of the first down marker, so it'll be third down, and Terry Pierce, the junior from Fort Worth, with another stop. <laughs> I'm sure Colorado would love to get Bloom out of the pocket with a pass run possibility right here. Robert Hodge, they'd love to get Robert Hodge out. Excuse me, I'm thinking he might go to Jabloom. Six and a half. Here's third down and four. Play fake, Hodge rolls to the end zone, got drum, almost picked off as he went to his secondary target. Washington had a shot at it. That time, Kansas State did not give up drum. Absolutely. Colorado thought they could break him free, and he wasn't there, and Hodge should have just eaten it. I think it was Brian Hickman, number 18, that covered drum that time to the flat, and Hodge showed his inexperience. That one, he just needed to run and punt the ball. That could have been disastrous. Now, three blocked punts for K-State. Will they come at Mariscal? There's one lone return man, Newman. So let's see if the 10 will come after him. They set a return. It'll be Newman. Bobble. And he's down at the 37-yard line. 37 yards away. This is 620 to go. And K-State down a touchdown. This is where the strategy of Bill Snyder may pay off. He figured if we could get a stop, we'll get the ball back in good field position, and his gamble paid off. Might have gotten a stop after a good kickoff down Well, there's no doubt about that. He, I mean, but he, he must have been rolling the dice and saying, if we don't score, I'll get it back. First down and 10 now for the Wildcats. Here's Roberson. Inside the 30-yard line. They line up Spurls behind Wilson. End zone. Terry. No. Out of the back of the end zone. 
Terry was oh so close, but a penalty flag is down. Defense is offside. Five yard penalty. That's a first down. down. First and ten for K State. A free shot for the touchdown. Roberson was late throwing this ball to Jason Terry because as he was open, the ball, I wonder if he was bobbling it. We obviously know just one foot is needed. He didn't have possession, I guess, because it's the only thing that could have been called. Another angle. Touches. He was cradles it late. Yeah, cradles it late. He was definitely bobbling. Good call. Now first down inside the 25-yard line for L. Roberson in K-State. Roberson on a great play fake is up into it at the 21 yard line by Sneed. Another one of those fellows from Mesquite, Texas. This is the spread read play that so many people are rated. Roberson is going to read the end man on the line of scrimmage as Sproul goes across. If he closes like he does, he'll keep it and get to the outside. He reads the first half well, but the second half, eh, not as well. Still another positive play. Second down and seven for Roberson and the Wildcats. Well, on the edge of their seats in Manhattan, Kansas right now. Roberson fires, deflected, double coverage on Terry. Penalty flag comes late. Two of them come firing that time. Roberson got, Terry got held that time. That was very obvious on the slant play. I think it was Joe Swift, number 28, held him all the way. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. No Grabbed question. him right around the waist. Swift panicked a bit, got the penalty. Easy call. The ball is just outside the 10 yard line for the first down for K State. Down by seven here at the 443 mark. Roberson. Draw spoils stop. Well. Roberson has done it about every way he can, every direction from shotgun on options, on quarterback leads. Most of it has been to the left, but that was that one big play he had. As you can see, they've attacked every different direction with Roberson. The ball just inside the 10-yard line. Roberson, Wilson, and Sproles. Roberson keeps it in his hands. Nothing doing. And another penalty flag. Now that was called near the Colorado bench, and that one must have been on Kansas. I stayed, I think they moved prior to the snap. Before the snap occurred, there was a false guard on the offense. That play does not count. Five yard penalty. Right. Please reset the game clock. I think the guard flinched just before the play. Actually, that's a pretty good play for Kansas State right there. They didn't get anything on it. And ball is brought back inside the 15-yard line, and this will be second down. We obviously know it's four-down territory for Kansas State. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to see a field goal. <laughs> Certainly not this time. I see the cornerback to see you. The referee, I believe, is going to check the time. He has trotted off oh, to my left over here, just outside the uh, left 25. There's some communication upstairs, and I believe he can check and see exactly where they should put the clock. Yeah, since there it was is. a dead ball call, they will go back to the previous snap time. Terry and Wallace. They all want Wallace as the key man. He's slotted to the left. Hill is the tight end to the right. Derek Evans is the third line out to the right. Roberson's looking. Comes back to Tucker Wallace in the middle. Down at the 10-yard line. It'll be third down and long. 
coming up. Harris makes the stop. Roberson did not get that ball to tackle Wallace cleanly this time. You need to hit this receiver on the run. They had the wide receiver slip screen, and Neinheis right there made him throw the ball a little higher than he wanted to. Third and ten of the pin. Dennis, a redshirt freshman from Louisiana, checks in as one of the wideouts. They're going to go four wide on third and ten. Roberson. In trouble. Sacked. At the 17-yard line. Sam Wilder, who earlier in this game caught a pass, comes up with a sack. First is Harris, I think number 30, that puts the initial, and then Wilder comes and cleans it up. Marcus Harris comes across, Roberson avoids that one, but he's not going to avoid the next two guys, and Wilder gets a huge sack. And now the field goal man is on the field with two and a half minutes, and still I'm a little bit baffled why they didn't kick when they were down inside the five and had a four. Remember, Kansas State only has one timeout left in the game. Here's a 35-yarder for Bright. Bright's the kicker, and uh, he's money. The D over by the right hash. Terrence Newman, the speedster for Kansas State. He's on the field. They'll try to get down, and they're going to take it deep and take their chances. Strickland will take a knee, and it'll come out on the 20-yard line. Well, now we've got 2-10. Isn't K-State down to just one timeout? Yes. yes. They have only one timeout to stop the clock. You've got the battering ram, number 22. Mr. Brown has rushed for 168 yards today for Colorado. You would expect now that they would put the clock in his hands. Here's your quarterback comparison. Hodge has been unbelievable throwing the ball today. Roberson not so much throwing, but he has run for 174 yards here today. Brown is on the field behind his outstanding fullback, Drum. That base eye formation for Colorado. Hodge will bring the clock down, put it in 22's hands. He'll stay in bounds, and the clock will continue to run. Pierce, outstanding linebacker, makes the stop. Two huge plays down there. Bill Snyder said, I'm not going for the field goal. Strickland comes up and makes the play, and then the next time they're down there, Marcus Harris comes over, forces Roberson to go wide, and a sack. The Colorado defense. He's put up what kids put up over 400 yards on him, had two huge stops at the end of the game. Injured Wildcat down on the field. You know, total here, Gary, we've had uh, 886 yards of offense. And, uh, you know, we just have to honor L. Roberson and Robert Hodge here today. They'll be our Chevrolet players of the game. The two quarterbacks. And in recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, I know what Robert Hodge is telling his team right now. One first down, and we win this football. We have a running team. We're known as a power team. If we can put move the chains one time, we can take a knee in the victory formation. And that was a definite fake injury right there. <laughs> But the clock will stop, start again. It will have no factor on the clock. And Colorado also has a great punter. They have protected him today. K-State has blocked three punts. If we get to fourth down, we've got 145. There's your base eye offensive set for Colorado. Play fake and Hodges rolling. He'll keep it. He want to stay in bounds. Stops the clock by going out of bounds. I can't believe it. Robert Hodge made two mistakes on that play. He snapped the ball with 12 seconds to go on the play clock, and then he ran out of bounds. Even his wide receivers were pointing to the clock and telling Robert Hodge, don't snap it yet. Young quarterback making mistakes. Third down and eight, minute and a half. Barnett's got to be thinking about his punting team right now. And Kansas State has not even used their timeout yet. Hodge 
Edge is going to throw it. Oh, incomplete. Penalty flag. Penalty flag. That's a first down. Oh, my goodness gracious. They went with the same play. Interference on the defense. 15 yards from the previous spot. Jesse Tetuan right there, number 23. It's the same play Bloom scored on. The ball is badly overthrown, but a panic right at the end of the play. He kind of grabs his arm and slows down McCoy. James Dunnigan. He was the fellow out there for Kansas State who was guilty of the foul. Gives Colin a first and ten. Now they've got a 124 to kill. Oh, and Gary go. can't believe his good fortune over there. They gave him every opportunity to get the ball back, and he didn't take it. They go now they go into the victory formation. K-State can stop it once. A little scuffling down there, and the officials will step in. So a tough setback for Kansas State here. Colorado about to close out a big win over Kansas State in what has been a wild and woolly one here in the Big 12. Penn State a winner today over Wisconsin. So they come back from that overtime setback at the hands of Iowa and Happy Valley. And Bill Snyder and the Wildcats just made too many mistakes. It has been an afternoon of big play touchdowns all day. They've gone up and down the field. Two 71-yard touchdowns, one apiece. Chris Brown, an 85-yard run for Colorado. Jeremy Bloom, a 94-yard reception for Colorado. Darren Sproils, an 80-yard run. And K-State down to its one last timeout has used it. And now the clock continues to run here with Colorado leading it. 35 to 31. K State threatened twice for the tying touchdown. They went for it on fourth down. Strickland made a great tackle down there. The second time, they did settle for the field goal, but that has left them within four. And now, Robert Hodge, who replaced Craig Oaks, a captain who quit the team, who Colorado expected to start today. And Oaks has wandered off to his next life. Robert Hodge steps in, goes 13 of.